Where are you? I'm Next to him. To Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Hey. Uh, yes, um, I wanted to know about um, uh, resistance. Um, you had mentioned uh, about two Saturdays, two Saturdays ago about um, the internal fight that we have with ourselves and about the uh, fear that we have, the, the disagreeable side of ourselves that we have to, we have to fight against. And I'd like to know, um, is that... Uh, our, our soul that we're, we're speaking about, or uh, that nature part of our, uh, our our DNA. When we speak about the battle that takes place inside of ourselves, it's not our soul; it's the reality of our of what we've created ourselves into. We only we only fear the unknown. There's no reason to fear anything except the unknown. So when we're battling with ourselves inside, we're fighting parts of ourselves that we don't fully understand. So it must be alien information, or not alien, alien. I mean by foreign information introduced to us. And that's done through the media. They introduce things in the media that are supernatural, that trigger fear centers, or create what's called the unknown. When you watch a movie like The Matrix, you have to say to yourself, is that real? Is it possible that there could be a so-and-so? They're triggering something inside because not, it's now become the unknown. You follow? And so then we're now warring against our own self with the realities of life. Well, like I said earlier, is the, is the concept of Jesus coming back real or are we being lied to? So what, what happens inside? When I start questioning that, I start a war inside. Is Islam true? Is Islam false? You know what I'm saying? Is, is, uh, is, is the Mahdi coming or... And it keeps on going. Is Hala Selassie Christ? Is he... Not, and you can keep on going on creating these worthless battles until you lose sight of reality. And then you start dwelling on your reality. And then you can't see reality no more. Everything you see has some type of mystical interpretation. So if a guy is standing off in the distance and he's staring at you, he says, this guy, is, he's trying to mind probe me. You know what I'm saying? He, he said, now nah, he looks over and he says, yo man, you look like my cousin. That's the end of your mind, bro. But because you're already in this fake state of mind of paranoia is a better word for it. You know what I'm saying? You just push that out the window and you go back and look for the next, the next person to look at you. You walk in the street, he said, people are following me. I know they're following me. You want cars there? Black car? You know what I mean? You sit in the movie, the guy sitting behind you, comes behind you like... That's, that's all that is. That's a war created by this, this, this fake society. And they must keep us in, I, I'm trying to convey a message. They must keep us in balance. They must keep us unfocused. You understand? They must give us Islam and then give us a million sects of Islam. They must give us Christianity, then give us a million denominations of Christianity. They must give us the Hebrew Israelites, the religion, the Rastafari. They must give us a whole bunch of things to keep us from becoming focused on the reality of any one of them. And what the reality of any one of them is change. How do, how do I benefit from absorbing whatever I'm being taught by anybody? How does it benefit me? How does it put me in line with reality? How does it bring the best out of me and prepare me for my greatest fear, death? You know what I'm saying? Whether I'm calling it Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, or rock worship, or snot following, whatever the heck it is, how does it work with me? That's the focal thing. That's what they don't want you to get to. Because when you get to that point, you start saying to people, it doesn't make no difference whether you're a Christian or a Jew, whatever it is, as long as you're focused. As long as there's a reality behind all the God, all the crap. You could be the, a fierce black Muslim going down with this here, but at the base of the black Muslim philosophy, there's a belief in a, a God personified and getting out of here into the hereafter. The foundation. Forget the rhetoric of the white man, the devil, and the grab. All that there is part of the law of people who are stressed and feel abused. But at the base of the doctrine, what is there? Right? There's a heaven and a hell, basically. A righteous and an unrighteous and a God. And if I went to a Sunni Muslim, I would come up with the same philosophy 
maybe it won't be colored the same way, but it'll still come down to when I strip it away, there'll be a heaven or hell, you know, and a God. You know what I'm saying? And and the middle of that is me, afraid of whether or not I'll make it to heaven or hell. And any philosophy. So their fear is not the doctrines and dogmas or things that we preach. Their fear is this. Are starting to come together and become focused. Hanging out on Saturday night, laughing and joking, waiting for Sunday, Sunday afternoon for questions and answers, gathering on Friday to do things together. We're starting to become focused, Met many different minds becoming one mind. And that's where the fear comes in. You follow what I'm trying to say? And that war does start inside because I have, I, I have to spend long hours teaching you people to care more about yourselves how great you really were and are and I have to replace this dogma of white Christianity and I gotta keep going over it because I look like a bad man the moment I talk about Christians that's how well they got the doctrine stamped in our mind when Egyptians predate the Christians and if I say well let's go back before Christianity let's go back and become Jews then at least Let's stop. Why do we stop at Baptist? Let's go back to where Baptist comes from. The word mikvah. The Hebrew word mikvah is where they get the word Baptist from. Let's go back there and follow the Hebraic doctrine. Keep Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Shabbat, and the laws that Jesus really kept. And all of a sudden, the real Jesus is not longer important. You want a fake Jesus. You want a Paul-type Jesus. You want a Greek-type Jesus. I said, well, nigga, you ain't Greek either. So you never be in Hebrew than you are being Greek, then I become some kind of blasphemer, some kind of troublemaker, because I'm concerned about the type of doctrine that you put in my people's heads that made them hate themselves, that makes them use drugs, that makes them do drive-by shootings, that makes them drop out of school, that makes them something you're teaching is wrong, and it's not working in the education system, and it's not working in the church. So something is wrong, and it's messing our minds up, and we're tired of it, and we're fed up, and we want to do something for ourselves. We want to re-educate ourselves, our way. And if all that we say about being Egyptian is hogwash, if it works for us the way that crap about Romulus and Remus worked for your ass, then I'm going to use it. Because I don't believe, I don't believe you was raised by no she-wolf. And I don't believe no little Irish elves gave birth to you. And I don't believe God came down to earth and had sex for Mary to have Jesus. Now, you, if that worked for you, and it made you a very powerful, worldwide, influential race of people, where you in everybody's business, wrecking everybody's stuff, and nobody could get on their feet without you in there. So whatever that philosophy is, it worked for you. It's time for us to have our own stuff, our own philosophy that works for us. And I got to start by finding a place in the planet or on the planet where you see a reflection of yourself in greatness first. I can't do that in Christianity. Because Michelangelo already beat me to the punch and made everybody white. I can't do it in Buddhism. Because they already have everybody there Chinese. I can't do it in Hinduism. Because they already got everybody there as... You can't even do it in Islam. Because they have everybody there depicted as Arab. You can't do it in Hebrew nor Judaism because they have everybody there depicted as Jew. And you can't do it in Christianity because they got it based on the Greeks and the Romans and Euro Jews. So I got to find you. I got to search the planet. And I got to find your nose and your eyes and the various hair textures that we have and the various skin complexions that we have. I got to find you. And then I got to get you looking in that direction, at yourself. You know what I'm saying? And then start telling you what you are and what you are not. And that's where it gets ugly. Because as I go back to Egypt and I look on the walls and I start seeing us of all different colors here, all different shapes, noses, hip shapes, all about us. I see that there. I don't see that in Ethiopia. I don't see that in Sudan because they made it against their religion to draw the pictures. 
So they cut off a visual contact with reality by making you think it's blasphemy to make images of God when Jesus is in the image of God. So it's all right for them to have a picture of Jesus in church as a white man, and at that point, imagery should stop. You hear me? And the Jews do the same thing. They got lions and... Or they don't put human beings, but all throughout on the Torah, there's two lions facing right there. That's an image of a beast. According to Exodus, that's an image of something that walks on this earth. It's all right when they do it, but when I do it, Islam got mad when I made Muhammad a black man. The Muslims went eight. Plain, simple thing is they lost their mind. When all you ex-Ansars know, that's the first thing they would approach your table with. Well, what is this? That's Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad don't look like this. You met him? <laughs> no, how you know he don't look like that? Well, um, history says history. You mean history. You don't mean no history. <laughs> history, history. <laughs> history don't say you say that. Because you want him to look like you. And we battled with that reality, didn't we? So he said, keep it. You can have that too. So now when I go to Egypt, and you go to Egypt, you open books in Egypt in the library, you see you. So now you got a, something to focus on, a reality. You are the ancient Egyptians today. Now, we're all over the Congo, we're all over the world. They, 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 what do they call it? We've been placed everywhere. We've been spread across the planet. So you find us in everybody's culture. But if you go back to what they're calling the first written language, and go back to the oldest found fossils in Uganda, in Kenya, in South Africa, you come back to the ancient Egyptians again. The newborns, a group of people. So when I get you there, I say, okay, now look on the wall of Egypt. Open books and look and see yourself. See your nose, see your eyes, see yours, see yours. See it, see yourself and interact with that reality first. Then worry about what we became after. Let me tell you about that, I mean about that. What we became after means, after we were Egyptians, then we became Hebrews. After we were Egyptians, then we became Muslims. After we were Egyptians, then we influenced the Greeks in the Torah. Moses was educated in Egypt before he brought them the commandments. Jesus was educated in Egypt before he brought them the gospel. You follow what I'm saying? And there wouldn't be no Muhammad without the Torah. Because the Quran or Quran, a number, a copy of the Old and New Testament. And that was all of us. We were the Hebrews. We were the original Muslims, the original out of us, the original Moors. People came in and took our culture. Europeans came in and mixed in with us because we always had our arms open to welcome any and everybody. And people took advantage of it. They came into Egypt. The Hyksos, the Hittites, and mixed amongst us. And they put it down in their history books as if that's what Cleopatra wanted to do. And not, and not that's the only thing she could do to keep the Romans from conquering and massacring her people. Make it look like she wanted to be tickled. Only you dirty minded people picked that one up. You hear what I'm saying? So my job here is to come in first, give you Islam, open it up, lay it out in front of you, dice it up into pieces, and teach it to you. So when you look at Islam coming to you from anybody, from anywhere, you say, I ain't buying it. Try to hit one of us answers with Islam and watch us take you apart. Try to talk to us about the Bible, Christianity, and watch us take you apart. Talk to us about Judaism, Hebrew Israelites, whatever else you want to call yourself, and watch us take you apart. And then take you back to Egypt with us and point you at the wall and say, that's what you really are. That's where we started. Where did we go wrong? But you got to understand, when a man comes to this country and is confronted with a people that have been brain dead, it's very difficult. Especially when these zombies have a doctrine called Christianity. So what you got to do is first you got to come in and teach them what they want to hear. And that wastes a lot of time. A lot of time. Teach them everything they need there so we can cover every base. So when someone comes up and says, 
Well, I'm a Muslim. I belong to the nation of Islam. You know, and um, I believe in Yaqub. You say Yaqub. Who's that, Jacob? Is that Jacob in the Quran or Jacob in the... Is that Yaqub, the Hebrew one? I mean, what are you talking about? All, all they got in the message of the black man was Yaqub, who was a sci scientist the head the size of two men who was, you know, who was while playing his uncle's yard, found an unlike attack of life, said he would make a devil weak and wicked, give it the power to rule well for 6,000 years. I mean... <laughs> That's, they got that as a nice package, well packaged doctrine. Until you start, start punching holes in it. So you start talking about who is Daddy Shabazz? What's the 59,000 on earth? When did they cross over to Africa? Give us some records of when they left Asia and went to Africa. Somebody recorded it somewhere. When you start doing that, all the nation of Islam and the five percenters get mad at you. Because you start questioning, say, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm free. Uh, a Freemason doesn't study for 52 years to become a Shriner. Bull crap. How do you know? Because I did it. Now, how did, how did you know? Did Farrar do it? Not according to y'all. Did Elijah Muhammad do it? Not according to y'all. But I did it. I entered in, went through, passed under the archway, and went all the way up. Got raised. I did it. I circled the car by there. Now what? Now I know it didn't take me 50 two years I'm 54 and I finished it before I was 35 <laughs> that I know because I had the experience and I come back to tell my people I did it you don't have to it's bull crap they don't know nothing and the nation of Islam's lessons are wrong Moses was not a half original there was no Moses <laughs> there was no such man as Moses there's no historical Moses ever proven to have ever existed okay there was a Ramosis, there was a Thut Moses, <laughs> and those are Egyptian names. So why would a Hebrew prophet have an Egyptian name? I think I know why. Because the Prince of Egypt movie said, <laughs> and that's where they got to do it. And don't you find it strange that all of a sudden that you became conscious of Egypt now we got Prince of Egypt, Stargate, Fifth Element, Mummy. All of a sudden they're bringing it back with their definite why? Because they're afraid that Malachi might be waking up or, or touching a center inside of you about Egypt. And they're spending money making lies. They knock the nose off the Sphinx while racing through Egypt on chariots. Roman chariots are that. You know what I'm saying? So it's a job. I had to go back to and give it to you all. Now you're sitting here, all you Nuwapians who are Ansars or Nubian Islamic Hebrews, you are well informed. Can nobody, nobody, Freemason, 5%, Nation of Islam, Israel, Hebrew, Israelite, Black Muslim, Green Muslim, Satyus, nobody can walk up on you with no silliness. You understand? So now that that's there, now it's time for us to go back to where we started. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in there. Now it's time for us to get back to the reality of we built the pyramids. You know why? Because we already covered all your schools and it didn't do nothing for us. We're still as poor as we was when we first took our Shahada. We're still as poor as we was when we took, got baptized. You took me in the water, 10 years later I'm a Christian, and still as poor as I was when you dipped me in the water. It didn't work for me. Something about a person's culture is supposed to do something for them, to better them. To take a good man and make him a better man. It's supposed to happen like that. People are joining the lodge, they're just as poor when they enter as a enter the printers to, to they pass to a fellow craft, become a master mason, they're still poor. So it's not working for us. Why? It's not our system. We have not made contact with that inner self you're talking about. But when you look at the permits, not the permits we have put here to give us a, a replica, a, a base of focus for ourselves, but when you look through books and you see the permits. You get a strange feeling. You say, I want to go there to Egypt. And I say, no, you don't. Because Egypt is not in the hands of Egyptians. It's in the hands of fanatical, crazy Muslims. Excuse me. Who go around blowing up buildings for the fun of it. It's in the hands of kooks. And it's not what you think no more. So if you ever want to get near Egypt again, you better build it. You've done it before, you can do it again. You follow, but you gotta get focused.
And when you get focused is when you look and you see that picture up there on that wall and you say, that's me. Or that's my ancestors who descended down for me, my descendants. You hear me? You got a focal point now. You see yourself. You see your nose. You see yourself in glory. You see yourself having done something that nobody can doubt. Why can't they doubt it? Because it's there. They cannot say that you are not an Egyptian. Say, well, my family goes back to Puerto Rico. I'm talking about before the Port and Rico was created, you was an Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? That's when I'm going way back before they gave us the names that divided us to make us think we're different so we wouldn't what? Mind link. They know the power of us linking, linking up. This is frightening. You hear me? There's an identity, a reality. You can open an Egyptian book and you see yourself. You see people look like you and you're ashamed to admit it to your friend because he might say you're tripping. So that, that person resembles me in that stature. But you don't want to say, you're hoping he has enough sense to say, you know, that statue look at me, he doesn't. Because niggas don't give credit to nobody. They won't see it. But you see yourself. The father, but you know what that means? That means you're not a Christian. And that's where it becomes frightening because you got Christianity as a means of salvation. They told you this is the only way you're going to get to heaven. And you say, well, where the heck is heaven? Up there. Up there where? Up there. Up there where? How far? Don't question. Stop and believe. But with, e with Egyptian, there's nothing to question. The system of heaven and hell, the lifestyle is right there recorded. You can go and read it yourself. You can see it in picture form yourself. The Tamil who spends millions of dollars going around Egypt taking pictures of buildings they then took over and over and over again. From this stage to the gate, this area we're in, this 19 acres we're on, that's the whole Egypt of the upper of Cairo. That's all. You understand? If you go down to Sudan, the same amount of space occupied, that's all. That's all. Two spots. And they have been making movies and taking, they got video after video shooting the exact same thing over and over again. All the programs are constantly reiterating the same, same stuff. When you turn, you put on any video of Egypt, it's the same statues. What is their obsession? The unknown. They are constantly digging to find the answer. They're looking for another Rosetta Stone that will give them an answer to everything and figure out a way to write you out of it and write themselves in. If they can't do it with the truth, they'll make Cleopatra movies. They'll put everybody from, <laughs> what's her name? Elizabeth Taylor. Now they got a new one out. Why? Why now? Why? What is the purpose of a Cleopatra movie the same year, a mummy movie, within the same year as a Stargate, which is an Egyptian deity hooked up as an extraterrestrial who lived, flies around a permit and they killed, you know. Why? Why so much time? Why so much effort? So much put into this Egypt thing. You know what I'm saying? Bush Garden, Egypt. Disney World, Egypt. What is obsession? The obsession is detouring you in hopes to find something that says black folks are not the original Egyptians because we've now broken away from Christianity. We broke away from Islam. We've experienced these things and we're looking for some more answers and we're finding that everybody is starting to look toward Egypt for the answer. You hear me? And they see that happening inside us. And they know that maybe the mysteries of Egypt will unlock to us that they can unlock because they're not spiritually in tune with the people that are there. And then if we get those powers again, if what happened to the Kennedy family and the Carter party for breaking those seals of Egypt, if we get those formulas again, they have a problem. If we start learning them incantations again, them chants, they got a problem. If we start sending curses out, 
they got a problem. If we learn the tones of our language in ancient Egypt again and start speaking in tone, they got a problem. Remember, they got us all speaking outside of tone. They got us speaking in bare languages. One of the last few men that still speaks in our language is Barry White. The only one speaking in tone from the bottom of his stomach, like black men are supposed to speak. I'm not lying. They, they're very conscious to that. Every black group had to have a bass. No white groups had no bass singers. Name one white group that had a bass. At the root of us, there's always a bass, except for the gospel white groups, and that's because they were emulating black gospel. You understand what I'm saying? There's something about the word, the sacred word, the power of the word, and tones. And the right tones put together, tore down, according to them, the walls of Jericho. According to them, there's never been a Jericho found. But according to them, uh, you know, they got a whole lot of accordance. You hear what I'm saying? So now I got to get y'all looking at Egypt. And I got, you got to get that reality of Egypt inside of you. So that there's a link made between you and the Egyptians. Because they can feel you calling on them. Because you've been calling on Jesus for 2,000 years and, and, and have not got a call. You've left voicemail, you left everything, and you ain't got no response. It's obvious that he does, he's not there to respond to you. Now obviously, he's there to respond to the slave master, because your ass is over here in slavery. And they went over there as Christians. Slave masters were Christians, weren't they? And they were also Muslims. So that was working for them. It didn't do us no good. So the God that led them into America and that led you into slavery is the God of Christianity. Yet you still worship in the slave master's God and feel good about it. Feel guilty if you don't worship the God that put you in slavery. And that hung, castrated, burnt, tarred and feathered your grandfather. While the KKK was on your yard, they had a cross. They didn't have a crescent out there, you know. They didn't have no hunk. They were burning a Christian cross. And before they launched out to your house, they opened a book of Romans and read from it. Which is what the KKK do. They consider themselves a Christian organization. And they've been existing, terrorizing blacks for centuries. With Christian God. And that God did not liberate your ancestors from their clutches. Many a black men all over Georgia got hung. Mississippi, Alabama. They were beating up preachers, spraying preachers in the 60s and putting dogs on black ministers. I was watching it, I was right there. They were marching in peace. Anybody old enough to remember? And they would hose them down, put dogs on ministers. And tell them, your God is not my God. That's what they told Dr. Martin Luther King. Your God is not my God, right in Mississippi. That made it all right. For them to do the things they do to people. In the name of their God. But now when I tell you, all right, we acknowledge that that's your God and not ours. Take your God, now I'm a heathen. Like uh, Al Sharpton said. You don't want us in your neighborhoods, and you don't want us to set up our own neighborhood. Why don't you want us to set up our own neighborhood? Because a prototype will be set up. An example will be made. That whole crap about we love ghettos.